In this video, I'll be showing how to use an image anchor in Adobe Aero to create uh, an augmented reality experience. Uh, you can uh, lock, oops, you can lock this uh, or um, animation, this uh, augmented reality experience, to an image, and uh, when you when you view that in real life, you can see uh, this is still just an arrow, but we're going to actually prototype this and and see what it looks like. Um, so let's get started. I want to kind of talk about where I started from. The first thing I did is I grabbed uh, an image that I want to use as an image anchor. Uh, this is kind of like a modification of the PSU AAUP logo. I just simplified it uh, a little bit. Um, just thought something I, like like a logo or an icon would be good to work with. Um, I think it'll be a little bit easier to recognize uh, from the program. So uh, I exported this uh, as a as an image, um, and then uh, I guess we could go into uh, I guess we should maybe go step by step. So I'm going to use this as an image anchor. Um, I do want to uh, do something that is work with um, uh, some text that I'm going to animate. So this is the text here. Um, I'm going to bring this right into, uh, um, I, th I think I have another version. Or let me, let me open up a new file and just save this out. I'm going to bring this into Cinema 4D. Um, the reason I want a new file is I actually want to outline the type. Um, I think it just works better when you're uh, doing a vector import. So um, I'm, I would just want to save this. Uh, okay, so I'm going to save this as labor. And I'm going to bring this into Cinema 4D. This is a new Cinema 4D file. So I'm going to bring in that uh, vector uh, uh, I made. Uh, that was this file, labor.ai. Um, I'm just going to bring it in. Uh, and this new R25 update just lets me bring in uh, Illustrator files really easily. I don't have to save it down into an older version. It's a really nice update. Um, from here, I can play with the extrude depth. Maybe I want it to be a little bit thicker. Um, I always like to play with the caps a little bit so it's not just totally flat. I'll um, bust out the caps, but maybe that's too much. Um, I think that's nice because it helps kind of catch the light, uh, helps define this a little bit more. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is maybe add a material here. Um, so uh, I think in the example I did something that was black type. Maybe I want to do something that's white, just so I have some variety. Uh, I like to try to do reflection in here by adding a Beckman layer like this, but I, f I find that it doesn't always translate to the um, <clears throat> the Adobe Arrow file. So I'm going to take this, drag it onto the uh, object so that it gets that material, and you can see it's kind of white, a little shiny, uh, a little reflective, but um, I think Adobe Arrow can't get all the reflections in the scene, so it doesn't kind of it doesn't look exactly like this. Um, maybe one thing I'll do is. Uh, Notice it's all flat. There's actually a control in here that lets me uh, um, kind of offset it. It's called path spread. And it's, I think it's kind of a nice thing when uh, you're in 3D space to, be, to use that z-axis a little bit. So I'm going to actually yeah, use that there. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just export this out as a FBX, which I can bring into uh, Adobe uh, Aero. Um, I did uh, actually make a version earlier, but uh, I'm going to just save over it. Uh, okay. So we've got that all set up, and now we're ready to go into Adobe Arrow. Okay, so here I am in Adobe Arrow, and what I'll do is create a new file because I want to show this um, from scratch. I'll call this AAUP2. Uh, I already did a practice version earlier. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to, to make something. Uh, uh, that uses an image anchor um, or labor union. That's AAUP for the professors. It's currently in contract negotiation. So let's get into adding an image anchor in here. So we can use anchors on a, a horizontal surface, a vertical surface. You know, so if you want to stick to a wall uh, or you know a floor, maybe uh, if if this image that uh, this image anchor that I made is going to be like a poster on the wall, maybe vertical makes sense. Maybe if it's on your phone. Uh, vertical is good. If it was like a card that was sitting on a table or like, you know, uh, an image on the floor, then I think horizontal would be good. So let's do image and it's, it should prompt us to uh, add a image. Um, 
there's different file types that can take the standard image ones, I think, like JPEG, PNG. Uh, if you're having issues, you might just want to save it into a JPEG. Um, okay, so here's the image anchor, and whenever this, uh, when Adobe Arrow, the app, uh, recognizes this image in the real world, it will, uh, you know, pull up anything that you have here. So let's bring in our 3D type. Uh, we save that as an FBX. Uh, so let's labor FBX. And we're going to kind of bring that into the scene, and that's you know going to uh, be placed generally like in the center of this. Uh, you can see what that looks like. You know, it's a little bit off uh, off center. So we could move it. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. And uh, you know, this this is pretty big. So um, maybe we'll, you know, we could just do this and and uh, this is what it would look like. And oops, it's getting a little bit, uh, you know, it would find the image and it would attach this 3D onto it and we could be done. Uh, but I'm going to add some animation to this uh, to kind of uh, just make it more exciting. So I'm going to grab uh, labor to I actually want it to like scale up a little bit. So maybe I'm going to scale it down um, and then make an action that will scale it up. Uh, and because, you know, it's because I scaled it there, maybe it's not in the center anymore. Uh, okay. Okay, so um, to add a uh, behavior, we'll hit this behavior button down here, behavior builder, and um, it uh, looks like I was in here before and actually had to um, restart the recording, um, but I'm going to start from scratch. So uh, we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll prompt you in the beginning for uh, you know what kind of uh, uh, trigger you want: the start, tap, or proximity. And I just did start. So whenever it loads, it's going to it's it's going to uh, start right away. And what I want to do is scale. Um, and one thing I notice is that the scale multiplier, if I put like six in, it only goes to five. So it's actually a little bit limited. Um, you can't scale like by 10%, 10 times, but um, I mean, that's actually maybe too big at the end, maybe 4.2. I actually, I do like getting big like that, but maybe, yeah, it's too big. And what we can do is add another action, um, move. And if they're layered like this, uh, they're gonna happen together. So maybe what we'll do is we'll move in the Z direction, move out a little bit, uh, maybe five centimeters. Um, the thing is, when you press this button here, it only shows you that one action. So if you want to see the combined actions, you got to go into the preview mode. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. It's um, it's on top of the image. Is this the final size that I want? Um, maybe maybe I'll move it move it out a tiny bit more uh, instead of five, maybe six. Uh, and then we can add other actions here. So these happen together and maybe we wanted to rotate a little bit. Uh, I think in the, the other version I had it rotate like 30 degrees. Um, and then I had it rotate negative 30. Um, and you, I'm just using the kind of defaults here one second, but you can go and change this. Uh, and then I think I wanted to rotate back to <clears throat> I think I wanted it to rotate back to the uh, original, so I'm going to do 30 again. And I think that should work. Maybe maybe for that last one, I'll have it go a little bit longer, so it just feels a little bit slower. So now it should take all of our actions and put them together. Okay, so um, oh, I'm a little bit off. I think what I did is I didn't add the numbers correctly. So I'm going to do negative uh, 60 because this one, the first rotation rotates at 30 degrees, and if I want to go negative 30 all the way here, I got to go to negative 60 total, and then I will, then I'll, uh, should rotate back just 30. Yeah, that works. And maybe this one takes a little bit longer because it's a, it's a longer rotation. So um, that's something to think about too.
Okay, so yeah, I've got this set up. Um, I am ready to go. Uh, this should be already loaded. Uh, if I go back to home, uh, it should be set up so I can open this in my uh, Adobe Aero app on my phone. I just want to show what uh, what I'll be anchoring this to. This is just the image on my computer screen. Uh, we're going to, again, uh, open up Adobe Aero on my iPhone. I'm going to open up the project, and you can see that uh, it found the anchor and it attached uh, you know, that, that text there. We're in the edit mode. If we want to go, and we can in the edit mode, we can add assets and we can make uh, modifications, which is really nice. Uh, but if we want to see what we made, we'll hit the preview mode. Uh, and yeah, you can see it's animating uh, just like we had it in the program. And we can move around. Uh, it's 3D. Record a video. We just hit that record button in the, uh, the bottom. And this is the recorded video I got out of... Uh, Adobe Aero. This is a video that was saved to my phone so I could share this um, with people. I could also share my Adobe Aero file uh, online and, and people can experience this if they uh, engage with the image anchor. Here's another example. Um, I just printed out that icon and I put it on a piece of paper, hung it on the wall, uh, and you can see the same sort of thing. So, uh, you know, you can think about use cases for this. Uh, where, where you might want to set it up. And this is just an Adobe Aero recording of that. Again, I can save this to my phone and share this with people. So hopefully this is a good overview of how to set up an image anchor in Adobe Aero. Uh, and I hope you have some fun with this, making things on your own. There are a lot of possibilities with this technique.